Hey guys, it's your girl Pauline and welcome to another episode of Hey guys, it's your girl Pauline and welcome to another episode of Pow Critics. If you're new to my channel, welcome! My name is Pauline Inoza and I do analysis, criticism about poetry, literary pieces, books, and many others. For today's video, I am going to talk about the famous poem, The Nymph's Reply to the Shepherd. So without further ado, let's get started! So for the first part of this video, I am going to introduce this poem. The title of this piece is The Nymph's Reply to the Shepherd. It's a six four-line stanza, a style of traditional pastoral poetry, and it was written by Sir Walter Raleigh. And for a little knowledge, this piece is a response to the other poem titled The Passionate Shepherd for His Love by Christopher Marlowe. Comments. Sounds interesting, right? So for me, I advise you to check the other poem for you to fully understand this analysis. Without wasting time, let's take some information! The Nymph's Reply to the Shepherd by Sir Walter Raleigh if all the world and love were young, and truth in every shepherd's tongue, these pretty pleasures might me move to live with thee and be thy love. Time drives the flocks from field to fold, when rivers rage and rocks grow cold, and Philomel becometh dumb, the rest complains of cares to come. The flowers do fade, and wanton fields to wayward winter reckoning yields. A honey tongue, a heart of gall, is fancy's spring but sorrow's fall. Thy gowns, thy shoes, thy beds of roses, thy cap, thy kirtle, and thy posies, soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, in folly ripe, in reason rotten. Thy belt of straw and ivy buds, thy coral clasps and amber studs, all these in me no means can move to come to thee and be thy love. But could youth last and love still breed, have joys no date, nor age no need, then these delights my mind might move to live with thee and be thy love. So basically, this poem presents the nymph's rejection of the shepherd's courtship. Each stanza tells that the shepherd's promises are too good to be true. In short, unrealistic. For example, in the third to fifth stanza, the nymph informs the shepherd that his offers, the gowns, the shoes, the flowers, and the other gifts are just temporary. These things will be broken, die, and wither. In summary, the shepherd's way of showing his love didn't convince nor moved the nymph's heart. Okay guys, as what we get used to, there's always one question in my videos. And the question for today is... What is the effect of this poem to the readers? In my perspective, this poem will make the readers to be more broad-minded about love. They'll know what true love is and all the misconceptions about this. I think the readers will gain tips and knowledge about this topic on how to love and what truly love is. For the last part of this video, I will share my own insights and understanding about this poem. This poetry discusses what women, even men, really desires if they're talking about love. The nymph didn't accept the shepherd's love because all of his offers and promises are not permanent. This symbolizes that his love is fragile or just into material things. But these things can't buy true love. Let's all remember that loving is a sacred thing. Material things can't really prove your sincerity. 
the true way of showing your love is on how you treat them, the respect, and the faithfulness. It's how you make them feel the most special person and the feeling that you will never, ever, never, ever, 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 ever leave them. I believe that love is eternal, not temporary, but forever. So anyways, that is it for my video for today. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions or recommendations about other poetries, just comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!